To say that Sylvester Stallone was my childhood would be a massive understatement. I watched every Rocky movie with my dad in preparation for the release of Rocky Balboa and I loved every minute of it. I've never been a fan of football so boxing was the first thing that I could properly bond with my dad over. So a series of movies about the greatest boxer to ever live, us and those films were a match made in heaven. I'll never forget seeing Rocky face off against Hulk Hogan in the start of Rocky 3 and staring in wonderment at my dad, look at the size of that bloke, only to see him smile and join in in my amazement. So in a way, I owe a debt of gratitude to Sly Stallone and I suppose I repay that debt by going to see most of the movies he stars in. Some are better than others, sure, but I stick with them. That's why, when I finished work last night, I called up my dad and asked if he wanted to watch Tulsa King. And we loved it. So I figured I'd share some thoughts on here, partly because this dude was asking me if I was going to do any more videos. Shout out to him. I mean, I'm watching this show anyway, so I may as well put an hour aside to talk to you about it. Having said that, I don't know how well this show is doing because its viewing figures are hidden behind Paramount. So this video might bomb. We'll have to just give it a shot and see. But before we delve into our review of the first episode, please make sure to smash that like button and subscribe because it's free and it means a lot to me. Not all of this is a poem. You can always unsubscribe at a later date if you don't like where I'm posting. There'll be no hard feelings. Right then, showtime. It's showtime, folks. With that little intro about my dad, it's worth mentioning that it was kind of sweet how this episode began with the Tulsa King talking about his own father. About how he laughed in his face when he asked him, Do you want to be a barber like me? I remember when I was 17, my father asked what I wanted to be. Would I like to be a barber like him? I laughed in his face. Before deciding to become a gangster. Thankfully, I'm not exactly gangster material, unless you count my playthroughs of the Mafia trilogy. In which case, I am the absolute goat, but you can still relate with this father-son relationship. It's a great start. Stallone's character talks about how he married that life, and after all those years, he was going to see if it married him back. So that's going to be an interesting way to look at this series. As though the gangster lifestyle and Stallone's character are in a partnership. Also, it's worth mentioning how beautiful the title sequence was. Flipping between the more rural area of Oklahoma and the cold streets of New York, it's wonderful. What a beautiful title sequence. So, Stallone leaves jail and is taken to someone's house and immediately objects to sitting in their seat with his back to people. You expect a company, Goody? What's wrong with you? Nothing, I just don't like guys standing behind me. Funnily enough, my uncle gave me advice like this once. Never sit with your back to anyone, Mark. That's what he said. I mean, he was a bus driver for 40 years, so I'm not sure he took his own advice there, but I suppose it's good advice, in theory. So Stallone is told he's no longer in charge of New York and has to instead go to Oklahoma and be the head gangster in the city of Tulsa. On his way there, a religious fruitcake Chuck some holy water at him. Excuse me? Actually, I'm more endowed than that, so... God damn, lady. Well, relax, it's, ho it's holy water, it's holy water. You should gargle with it with that mouth. Yeah, that's a good idea. It's not like acid attacks happen regularly, you stupid woman. I'm very surprised someone didn't tackle her. But aside from that, this is definitely a bad omen. This character is going to die in the end of the series. He's got to. He lives too dangerously to get away with it. The second he left the airport and stepped foot in Tulsa, he was signing his own death warrant. This man is going straight to hell, and this woman's splash of holy water is the first omen of many to come. Stallone goes to a bar, and a woman is like, Whoa, you're Stallone? I loved you in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, it was great how your name was on the poster despite you only being in the film for three minutes. Sure, it was the only reason why Mark even went to see it in the cinema, but... Hang on, sorry, I got sidetracked. Where was I with the review? Hey, why are you rude to my friend? Oh yeah, then Helen from Episodes talks to him 
sleeps with him, then realizes that there's an age gap between them, so she leaves. How old are you? <laughs> Seriously. Well, I want you to say, hey, Dwight, where were you when JFK got assassinated? All right. Where the fuck were you? I was a senior in high school. Seriously? That would make you, what? 75. Big ones. Oh my god. Really? How dark was that bar? That you didn't notice that you were hooking up with someone who qualifies for the unlimited soup, bread and tea for one pound in Asda cafes. Come on mate. She said, I thought you were pushing 55. Is she blind? This is very clearly a man in his mid 70s. It's made all the more worse by the ending where she's revealed to be a federal agent. You know, profiling is something that they teach in the FBI. Imagine if someone robbed a bank and she was asked to profile them. Oh, I don't know, I reckon it was a 12-year-old boy. She has no sense of age. What a stupid woman. Fred? Oh my god, is he dead? Oh, and Bertram from Silicon Valley is in this. There's not much to say about him. I wasn't a fan of him in that, nor in Spider-Man. He just isn't the greatest actor, and I don't think he brings much to any role he's in. He seems to think that just because he shows up and he's got bug eyes and those weird glasses he wears, that he doesn't have to say anything funny and people will just laugh at him. But I, I don't buy it. But I know people do like him, so I'll leave that there. Other than him, the actors are solid. Stallone is great, enough to carry even the crappiest of productions. Um, well, except for that one. Alright, and maybe that one. If I was pushed to describe his character, I'd probably say that he's basically a GTA protagonist, picked up and dropped into a TV show. If we got to play as his character in a GTA game, I wouldn't be in the slightest bit surprised. He fits right in. But yeah, overall, great show. I really enjoyed it, and I hope there's enough of you watching this show to justify me making more videos on it. If you can like and leave a comment below, it'll boost it in the algorithm a bit and heighten the chance of me continuing it. Just makes it possible for me to do. If not, let me know what shows you are watching at the minute, because that's really helpful as well. I'm thinking of getting back into this YouTube thing and doing weekly episodes on Quantum Leap, because I'm loving that show at the minute. Are any of you watching that? Oh, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. You can always unsubscribe at a late date if you don't like where I'm posting. It's completely free and no hard feelings if you want to leave it at some other point. Go and check out some of my other videos. I recently reviewed Better Call Saul and the rehearsal, amongst other stuff. So go and check them out. Right, thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. Bye.